Very good afternoon, friends. Uh, I'm Sabya Sachi Bharti, uh, and on behalf of my organization, CMS Vatavaran, I welcome you all uh, again in this uh, live Q&A session with one of the most prominent environment and science filmmaker of our country. Uh, as you know, friends, that we were uh, we for last since last 18 days we were having this celebration of biodiversity. Uh, uh, where we were having uh, film screenings, award-winning film screenings, then uh, uh, Q and session uh, with the prominent filmmakers of India, it, the green filmmakers of India, the workshops, uh, the panel discussions, uh, and, and 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 these things. So, but uh, today uh, again uh, we are here with uh, uh, one of the most prominent filmmaker who had, you know. Uh, made a mark when it comes about environment and green filmmaking and um, I'm very privileged to have uh, Mr. Himanshu Malhotra with us. Uh, very good afternoon, sir. How are you? Good sir? afternoon. Fine, thank you. Uh, it's uh, a pleasure to be with you. It, it, it's really the pleasure is all ours, sir. Thank you for accepting our invitation and uh, becoming part of this Q and A session. So, friends, before uh, I start the the, the session, uh, let me have the privilege to introduce uh, Himanshu Malhotraji to you. Uh, friends, Himanshu Malhotraji, an environmentalist, animal rights activist, and a wildlife filmmaker who has been working in the area of creating awareness on issue concerning the environment for over three decades. And uh, for his work, uh, CMS Watavaran uh, uh, in 2015 uh, has decided uh, to present Prithvi, CMS Prithvi Ratna Award to Himanshu Malhotraji. Uh, Himanshu Ji has been relentless in his individual effort to create awareness on issue of wildlife traits, especially uh, uh, trade in marine species. And friends, as today, World Ocean Day, we had Swati Tyagarajan earlier with us. We have, uh, and now we have Himan Sumalutra sir with us because he had uh, done a, a lot of work when it comes about the marine species trade. As a recipient of UK Environment Film Fellowship, he explored the area of exploitation of marine species like corals, shells, sharks, and, and, and subsequently he has done extensive work in the Gulf of Manar on a specialized fishing practice and exploitation of the coral reefs. Uh, his documentary, The Cell Story, which today we are screening on the Facebook and YouTube channel of CMS Vatavaran, where you can go and you can see this wonderful film. It, the film explored the issue of illegal trade in cells along with the issue of livelihood and the handicraft industry. He has made a campaign film for Traffic India on wildlife crime, Don't Buy Trouble which has triggered a national wide effort to create awareness about both the nature of the crime and the laws which can be issued against it. Himansu has made a number of films on climate change for COP21 and COP22. Uh, Himansu Maratha has been also involved in many campaigns for animal rights. Uh, and, and, and in his film, Are uh, So Insensitive to Life, was used to bring three major rulings in favor of animal rights a ban through the inhuman killing of a street dog, the ban of wild animals in circuses, and the closing down of slaughterhouses at the Eidgah. He conceptualized and produced and filmed the series Heads and Tails, uh, anchored by Ms. Menka Gandhi, which was path-breaking and highlighting issue of animal cruelty and violation of the Wildlife Protection Act. And uh, Himansu had made uh, films on a variety of subjects ranging from high altitude wetland of Ladakh to coastline Kanyakumari from the Tarai region of Uttar Pradesh to the Sundarbans of West Bengal. He has also been long associated with Jew movements in India, was member of expert group on design of Central Jew Authority, a member of advi advisory committee of National Geological Park, Delhi, Honorary Wildlife Order, Delhi, Voluntary Wildlife Crime Control Bureau, Government of India, and co-opted member of the Animal Welfare Board of India. He was a member of the governing council of the prestigious Wildlife Institute of India also. A very warm welcome to you, Himansu, sir. Thank you. So, uh, Himansu ji, you are one of the, I, I, I can, with full confidence, I can say that you are one of the most prominent 
not only the environment filmmaker but you are also considered as a science communicator and science filmmaker of india also uh, so want to understand like how this journey started what was your educational background and why you decided to becoming a filmmaker especially uh, environment uh, filmmaking you decided to come uh, well it's uh, right from my childhood i was always interested in photography i was in the school photography team i was uh, in my college photography team so photography was always a part of my interest and uh, taking photographs of uh, birds and animals was was i was much more um, what should i say mm. uh, ease i was at ease with taking nature photo, uh, photographs and then i did a course in uh, still photography and after that uh, i when i got to know about uh, the mass communication center at uh, the jamia procedures uh, uh, mcrc so i applied for it and i was the first batch uh, i got into it and i was the first batch of uh, mm -hmm. uh, i was doing my political science but then i left that and this was where i was really interested and uh, photography started because i needed to document uh, uh various uh, birds and species various species of birds which mm -hmm. i had done so it, it sort mm -hmm. of uh, a hobby was turning into a, a profession sort of a thing uh, it was so we started uh, i started uh, that's how i started uh, uh, this thing and uh, apart from uh, this i another field of interest was uh, medicine Okay. Uh, I was the first uh, person to shot uh, a bypass operation in India. Wow! Uh, uh, then films on cataract, films on various uh, neuro uh, neurosurgery procedures, and all that. So, uh, so this was dealing with life always. Whatever we did was, and this was an basically it was an interest, and uh, it was. Uh, uh, it was never taken it as a commercial venture for me it was yeah. more of a, uh, a thing that i had to pay back the society so yeah. that's how it started off uh, uh, then various films on science and various films on uh, uh, medical and uh, uh, and environment and wildlife and to bring uh, in, uh, science into it things like uh, we did a film on uh, the tiger census methodology. Uh, okay. This was for the ministry and the U.S. Uh, government, uh, mm -hmm. how to count the tigers in India, mm -hmm. and uh, it was a it was a scientifically based thing on various uh, aspects. This was for the field staff, uh, the lower ranks, to tell them what, uh, how you should go about counting the tigers. And what are the processes that you need? Whether it's the DNA, whether it's uh, the uh, scat, uh, this thing, or uh, the pug mark, or various uh, uh, aspects of uh, mm -hmm. uh, of counting the thing. So science and and every time they have been, uh, it, it's been correlated to uh, uh, with filmmaking. So, uh, so uh, uh, the, the, when you started making the films, you know, it was a way back more than three decades, perhaps. Uh, when we compare uh, that time when you started making film, and now there is so much of advancement, like, uh, was the advancement of the technology killed the making the creative process of making the films the filmmaking process uh you see what uh, yes when we started we had uh, large cameras we could not uh, get into situations we could not uh, uh, we had to innovate everything that uh, if you needed a shot you had to innovate that shot you needed to uh, see how you could uh, uh, do it uh, for example if uh, uh, we had uh, when we were talking about uh, uh, 
open heart surgery i mean we couldn't go close to the thing then when we're talking about uh, taking uh, shots of birds and animals i mean you could not and there were ethics involved in that ethics mm. like uh, for example one would not shoot a nest unnecessarily go and shoot a nest one would not uh, 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 and it was because the cameras were too big uh, it became uh, difficult for the camera to go to towards the, and you didn't have lenses in india i mean technology was not there and people we did not have lenses we have, were always uh, 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 devoid of uh, good quality equipment but somehow we managed it and yes today the technology has changed drastically you've got cameras which are very small which are uh, you have very good cameras you can go anywhere lighter cameras lighter this thing earlier the cameras used to be for example uh, when we had uh, a, a beta or you had uh, 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 low band or high band the recorder was separate the camera was separate and yes. the battery would not yes. last uh, the battery would last only for 20 minutes yes uh, depending on how old the new uh, the battery was and uh, it it was uh, one had to be very very careful and you had to carry a lot of uh, weight yes which is yes. not there today uh, today technologies are changing much uh, much more you're getting smaller things you're getting better equipment so that, but does it feel that you know uh, the excitement of making film? Uh, yeah, it does. No, it doesn't kill. It it uh, enhances uh, your capabilities. I mean that is there uh, when you say that uh, uh, it it does with technology, with the drones, with all this thing. The technology is changing much faster, and it's it's making it much more you're getting a different perspective altogether mm -hmm. uh, so you what we couldn't uh, do earlier we are able to do it now uh, so it it is in a way it is it is interesting it is uh, more challenging uh, one when we were doing uh, diminishing resources for the ministry we didn't have uh, uh, i still remember we had to get a special camera for underwater filming in India. Yeah. Uh, we had to get a special housing. And how deep we could take that housing was uh, was uh, very interesting. I mean, every time it was a shallow housing, We but we trained the divers, we trained uh, people, and they sort of uh, started. Uh, uh, so we had to be very, very careful. Because uh, sir, anything. As, uh, sir, as you, you know, you have talked about underwater filming and as today is the world oceans day and you had worked ex extensively on about uh, the oceans in india uh, wanted to know how much as we indians or as we uh, filmmakers in india how much we are we know our oceans and, very little very and why little. So, why so because we had ocean like we had a, such a long coastal line but still, we hardly know anything about oceans, and so why is that? You see, uh, very little is known about oceans. Mm. Uh, we have not got enough technology to do it. It's only now that people are working in, on the oceans. It is now that, uh, if you remember, we there used to be a program. Uh, uh, Jacques Cousteau used to uh, show a thing on the uh, oceans car. Mm -hmm. Years it used to come. The program used to come uh, from uh, on Doordarshan. Yeah. So that was the all the films were from outside. All the films from uh, were from. Though we have a a very large uh, coast area, but very little is known. The question is, we have always uh, we have n never taken oceans as a resource or sort of a. It is a resource for livelihood but uh, you are taking a lot of things from uh, the ocean but you're not paying back anything to the ocean it's it's like a thing that uh, you can get any amount of things from the ocean and it's always it'll be supplied to you whereas you don't see it's so vast that you you can't see what is happening to the thing yeah I mean, we are uh, doing 
yeah we are doing yeah. such a, a great harm to the oceans also as we are doing to all the bio uh, all yeah. our environment and biodiversity yes uh, the mindless overfishing is killing the ocean it's it is killing the oceans uh, overfishing then reducing of the fish net size uh, so the the younger ones are are being caught and along with that a lot of uh, bycatch is also comes with the, yeah. along the fishing and that is all waste uh, people are not uh, they are just thrown away and that's the amount of biodiversity is lost it's it's amazing how uh, we are losing and people are now going in for uh, specialized fishing uh, yeah. if they want to go for stingrays they will only go for stingrays if they want to go for uh, 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 crabs they will only go for crabs but along with that a lot of bycatch is also comes in and that becomes a problem uh, they are just thrown away in, uh, to die sir you are doing a lot of programs in around oceans so can you tell me a little can you tell us a little about those programs your work you are doing these days on ocean you see uh, when we started on uh, doing a program uh, we were going into territory that we had never i mean you never seen that territory when we were doing the program on uh, diminishing resources it was a uk fellowship that we had got and uh, uh, it started off with uh, getting a small little uh, housing for the for our camera and uh, as a hobby sort of a thing and then it we said we must do something about it so we went in and uh, we applied for this uh, uh, thing and when we reached uh, uh, we went to kanyakumari there were over three, 300 shops selling various shops, types of shells and uh, products of shells and you could find uh, king shells you could find band items you could find trocuses you could find so many type of uh, uh, so we, that got us interested in into the whole thing and we started uh, exploring further so we went down to andamans and there we started uh, uh, we got uh, a shop selling only a, a small little shop which was selling nothing but uh, shark fins and that was that was really uh, an eye opener for us i mean the amount of shark fins they are it's it is amazing then uh, with the help of the coast guards we were on the uh, uh, we went with them for a uh, uh, thing and they got a, a, a burmese boat i think or uh, and which was sort of uh, uh, was nothing but shark fins it the whole boat was worth i don't know how much and they had nothing but shark fins in them. apart from that uh, corals i mean you get uh, the amount of corals that was being sold in Kanyakumari. It was amazing, uh, over 300. So when we did this film, we and there was uh, there were factories uh, that were processing all these shells, and uh, there were mm. factories, and these factories are huge. I mean, they are mm. you, they are into the. Sh if you see the film, it's it is uh, in that film also, which we uh, diminishing resource, and then we went after 10 years to. Uh, uh, to the same factory again it had improved it had uh, sort of got so much of uh, uh, shells and uh, shells were being wasted uh, after all shell is a li living thing uh, yes. so so it, it it was shocking the way it, uh, we and the corals the amount of corals there mm -hmm. that are being uh, used mm -hmm. Things. and and for what i mean for just a showpiece and uh, so it's 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 uh, uh, and, and shells now are being used for not only this thing uh, shells uh, are being used for uh, for uh, bangles shells are being used for uh, and it's amazing how uh, we are using these things yeah uh so now uh, i want to you know uh, talk about 
uh, one of the you know most path breaking uh, you know uh, environmental series of uh, you know heads and tails and i remember that uh, when it started i was you know young and we used to wait for the you know these kind of programs we used to watch these programs those days it has it has made it it marks heads and tails so just can can you tell us how it happened like kaise bana how you decided to come up with the series and how you you know proceed uh, menka gandhi ma'am and then uh, some interesting anecdote while making the series uh well uh, as one of my projects for uh, my uh, college i had done an av on uh, cruelty towards animals and uh, since i was always involved with the uh, animal rights right from my childhood i had got a lot of photographs and all these things so we went into the slaughterhouse we went into the uh, into areas which were uh, people wouldn't normally like to go into so we asked uh, uh, i asked doordarshan that uh, i wanted to make a, a program on uh, uh cruelty towards animals uh, and they thought it was not uh, uh, it was uh, what will they show uh, talking heads so i somehow managed to persuade them to uh, give us this uh, program and this program was uh, under focus focus used to be a current affairs program that time and uh, they gave us the the least budget thinking it was just a talking head and that's so when we went down to uh, we shot all over the country for that luckily i had a camera of my own and i could uh, go and shoot uh, and it took me some time to shoot we went into the slaughterhouse we went into uh, the market of the slaughterhouse how the animals were being treated uh, the myths uh, regarding uh, various uh, things for example Uh, oils being used for uh, through uh, uh, spikel deserts uh, how and here's a country that uh, uh, believes in gandhian's uh, way that uh, there's a famous uh, quote that you are judged by the the type of uh, how you treat the animal and when you go and see that it was it is horrible it uh, there are certain things even killing of dogs uh, through mcd used to be and it, uh, till date i mean it's been 30 years now till date i hear that uh, whimper of that dog uh, which we followed uh, while it was going to the uh, this thing uh, they were electrocuted uh, they would not die fully they were uh, i mean it was it was horrible uh, so i did this film and uh, doordarshan did not show this film for 6 months uh, though it Why was so? commissioned by uh, because so i called them up i said what is the thing they said uh, uh, they called me the officer called me and said uh, look uh, this is a dinner time uh, thing that it comes hmm. uh, the program comes on dinner time and there's too much of blood and gore in it and first they were telling me to finish the program uh, within two weeks and then they did not show it and i was getting very frustrated and very this thing but somehow they managed to screen the film and that was the film that sort of uh, the whole press got into it uh, people started weeping seeing that film people uh, they the whole thing changed and it till date it is one of the programs which has got the maximum judgment in its favor uh, in favor of animal rights whether it was circus animals uh, till date it has and it was the first time a film was taken as an evidence uh, in the court of law to uh, uh, establish a crime that was uh, so called crime so the uh, in fact the judges uh, asked me for the copy of the film they we went they asked me to also go and uh, be a part of the avatar committee that uh, went to see uh, how the thing is, uh, is all uh, uh, the the sewer lines the all that 
uh, thing how do they process it and all that stuff mm. and it was shocking again it was shocking the judges didn't even want to see the thing so right up to the supreme court and all that stuff so taking that as a thing and it got many judgments so mrs gandhi had a book she was writing a book heads and tails also so then she asked me also can we do a program on this thing uh, so we said yeah i can we can do it so that's how we started uh, heads and tails um, the first uh, couple of uh, most of the uh, heads and tails were uh, we took on various uh, subjects for example right from uh, kaudhan where they take a small little piglet and uh, tie the legs and hit it on the head of the uh, it's a thing from bihar i think uh, onto the cows so it, the, a lot of uh, then uh, ram fights uh, then uh, in makar sankranti foxes uh, so th th there are a lot of uh, uh, cruelty that was happening and uh, we started uh, projecting each uh, 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 slowly and steadily we started projecting it so it, it uh, and it got the best of uh, uh, it's like you yourself have said that it has changed a lot of things and you were yeah. keen to see that yeah. program yes so that's how it, that's how it started off then uh, uh, so that was one of the things that needed to be uh, we needed to sort of show shock people uh, so have you been while, while making the film have you been even threatened by the you know people? Oh, yeah, yeah lots of lots of times lots of times uh, we have been threatened in fact the circus people keep on telling me what uh, have you done to you that you but the problem was uh, animals were kept in very small cages animals were treated uh, uh, not in a proper way the slaughterhouse people in fact i had a one day i get, got a call that we are putting a secure we are giving you security so but as soon as you get security you have uh, you are identified so i said sorry i don't want to take it so uh, that's the thing you you get and it's a part of the thing that you want to do i mean it's it's a, it's a commitment to life it's a commitment to uh, to something you believe in so sir you were you know one of the few uh, filmmakers who can claim that yes their film had changed you know a thing like Mike Pandey sir, or you, or uh, Nutan Manmohan, or or Jalal Jilani. I think these are the few filmmakers who certainly can uh, claim that yes, their film has changed something. Uh, so you were into the environmental film and and wildlife and and animal atrocity and all these things. Then why suddenly you wanted to change the track a little bit, go to the medical filmings? medical film was uh, along with the that was in college i mean what happened was that one of my first films that i did was independent film was on cataract and that really fascinated me i mean uh, it uh, uh, i did not know i mean again i'm going 30 years back technology has changed again in cataract uh, so they used to say motia nikalte hain motia is it's like a pearl that they suck, suck out the thing and it was so after that uh, i thought no i must uh, a lot of people are going down that was a time when a lot of people were going down for bypass surgeries abroad so why not uh, uh, and the same thing was being done in india also uh, so uh, i thought uh, i need to show case that india is also one of the leaders in bypass or in medical uh, uh, technologies so then i did this uh, uh, film uh, with the professor vinogopal of ex aim director and uh, the famous uh, uh, person who did the first transplant in india and all that so i did a couple of films with him uh, on 
uh, how how does the beating heart they stop the beating heart the, they how they make the it's it was known as new channels of the heart i mean when you're talking about bypass you are talking about so it it was uh, it was again a fascinating field that uh, uh, you're dealing with uh, again you're dealing with life so that's how it so uh, medical films uh, then we were doing news for uh, on medical uh, news uh, bulletins for doordarshan and so were uh, we were also asked by doordarshan to do environment and wildlife film uh, bulletins a special uh, slot they had given us for uh, doing environmental and uh, so both of them but somehow environment uh, took on much more uh, time and much more uh, 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 how should i say uh much more thing for us i mean that was the thing that was the need of the hour uh himanshu ji one question uh, i ask it to other you know filmmakers also uh when it comes about environmental film making or environmental journalism why it is always anti development or anti government why it has to be you know stopping the projects or 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 uh, trying to stop the uh, of the, the work of the government or making of a road or making of a dam or making of some project or take or coming up with some factory why environmental film making environmental journalism is becoming or as the as as the media or the channel are portraying anti development anti government anti no it is not anti government it is not anti development it is not uh, you see you have to take a balance somewhere or the other now for example if you build up a uh, you are taking you see when you are talking about environment you uh, you are talking about a lot of other factors which a builder doesn't know uh, a person a developer doesn't know that will affect the environment for example you are building a road or you're building a uh, uh, you're putting a pavement you say uh, pavements are you need to put a nice beautiful pavement on the road now that pavement especially like in delhi and all the amount it is the heat that generates every square inch of uh, uh, of that pavement or of that stone or that concrete that you put in is going to generate heat and that heat is going to take longer to uh, to cool down so the temperatures are cha changing uh, you are not seeing the groundwater uh, uh, recharge you are not seeing so when you have to uh, see so development has to go in uh, should developers or uh, uh, people who are into all this project need to look into all these things for example if you see these days they are uh, they're widening the road dividers and they're making it from 1 feet high to 3 feet high uh, if you've seen at various places they have got and it's nothing but concrete the the amount of heat that is is uh, going to generate Uh, it, it is uh, you can't even i mean if someone wants to take a thermometer and see what uh, how much it is i in fact uh, i was uh, the roads are so hot that the tar gets smelted so you can imagine how heat uh, and so they have to look into it in totality it is not only development like that i mean when you look into totality then you can come out with new ideas i mean everything is not only uh yes you can make it things look beautiful without uh, adding cement you can uh, uh, make things look good without uh, and you have to uh, for example again i'll give you an example they covered a drain uh, where we live and till date uh, it was a 1 and 1/2 km of nothing but solid uh, ground and that was a groundwater uh, Uh, recharge uh, the the rainwater harvesting it was a natural rainwater harvesting thing after covering it up 
we have gone from the and everyone said no it's smelling it's and what was the reason for smelling the corporation did not uh, put in uh, uh, look after the the drain they, the corporation uh, opened uh, put the sewer into it and it is one of the tributaries of uh, of the yamuna so instead of doing the job in a proper way they went into a shortcut now it's become a disaster it uh, they have not when they built up this drain they did not uh, the curtain was used to be only 2 feet wide now it's 50 feet wide now these are things that uh, and they have just washed their hands away they made uh, uh, rainwater recharging pits they have not worked a day so we are not against development we are against uh, irrational uh, development i mean what are we getting out of uh, uh, you have spoiled the whole thing throughout the world they are uh, breaking down uh, covering of the drains and all that stuff here they are putting so much cement everywhere you go there is cement 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 so it it, it needs to be really looked into i mean all these developers all these uh, uh, people should uh, see what happens i mean uh, you're making underpasses we have not been able to uh, stop uh, minto road being flooded every year minto bridge uh, if you see every year you see the buses stuck there so it means yeah. there is some there, there is some you see the city has to uh, there has been and when we build in uh, uh, basements we build in uh, things where are we going to pump so much of water where are we going to uh, get the electricity for this uh, nature nature is very good nature is uh, see has seen all this and that's why their natural uh, uh, flow for uh, all these tributaries all these nalas all these things drains they were natural uh, naturally uh, but yes you need to channelize it but does not mean that you need to uh cement the whole thing uh yeah alternatives yeah uh now coming to the film making again uh there are so many young film uh you know students and mass communication students and journalism students and film and and film making the students uh you know coming into um, field and making uh, documentaries and all these things uh according to you what is the most important thing which the you need to be a good filmmaker whether it's environmental filmmaker or human rights filmmaker you make you know put it in small small brackets but at the end of the day it's the film it's the storytelling art so if someone want to be a filmmaker what will be your message to them what what are the qualities you want to see in a good filmmaker you see any filmmaker has to be committed to a cause hmm. now uh, in environment filmmaking you uh, this is what i have gone through i was first in an in, in environmentalist uh, animal rights uh, activist a wildlife uh, and then a filmmaker hmm. uh, i mean that is uh, how it uh, went with me hmm. now anyone who wants to get into this thing they have to be committed to the cause it's not that humne ek film banani hai ji bana ke khatam karni hai it you have to be committed to the cause of of that particular thing whether it's human rights whether it's you have to be committed to that it, it is not uh, so any good filmmaker who is committed to the cause will be able to make a good film and simple films are also very uh, easy uh, are the simplest the film is it uh, you send a message very clearly i mean there should not be so much of gimmickry there should not be so much of uh, now if you for example if you take uh, the news you see the frame of a news uh, the amount the ticker there are 10 things that are going at the same time so the viewer is not even able to read one ticker 
within the next second there's another uh, this thing 100 news in one uh, 10 minutes or 100 news in uh, this thing so you have to be simplicity has to be there simple uh, you have to be committed to cause and you have to do a lot, lot of research i mean if you are researched your uh, films well people are able to understand them people are able to uh, you are on a strong footing so simplicity and uh, with today's technology you're doing it on a phone also but still you need to the frame has to stay there the frame has to uh, uh, show what you're trying to show on on you your mind so things like small little things like this need to be looked into yeah. and uh, when it comes to filmmaking uh storytelling uh they, 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 they are two different parts of it. One is art and one is a science means the, the art of telling a story and the science of editing and sound and lights. So according to you, which is more important to know the science or to know the arts? Like, no, both go in hand in hand. Hmm. I mean, earlier we used to think that uh, the camera is the most important thing apart from mm. the direction in uh, the thing but mm. along with the camera if you get the sound mm. that makes a lot of difference uh, 50 percent of the film is sort of uh, depends on the sound also the uh, what type of sound you are uh, uh, generating if you're getting location sounds what are the type of location sounds uh, it is very important to uh, to get sound so both uh, uh, and these are small little things that again you have to see where to increase the level of the sound where to bring in silence where to bring in and where to get the natural sounds running mm -hmm. i mean we should not only have one long music track behind mm -hmm. so it, it has to be the sound also plays a major role in it and that and the sound really enhances the the quality of the film so both arts and science both goes hand in hand they go they, so, they go together yeah uh, in a way we can say that uh, the art is uh, the the art of storytelling is like a prana and the science is like a body the structure yeah. Uh, yeah. okay so sir you have this uh, a, a long history of of filmmaking uh, decades of uh, you know uh, history of making films and doing things if one thing which you regret while going through all of your films and one one film or one instance that you look back and you said i should not have made that because that has done something bad to someone do you have that kind of you know thing with you the moment with you no no you have to whenever you see a film whenever you're doing a film you're doing it for a cause mm. you're doing it for for the betterment of that thing uh, you need to it's not like that yes certain people do feel bad about it they will hurt them for example, again, the cruelty film, I, at times I feel uh, when I had said this, uh, the circus people said, what have we done to you? But look at the, the larger goal at it, that mm -hmm. the animals were not uh, treated properly. Mm -hmm. For that matter, even human beings were not treated properly. Small children are working in circuses and all. So mm -hmm. there, there, there is uh, 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 there is someone to look into children's point of view. There is someone to look into animals' point of view. Uh, so it, it is, uh, uh, you have to see the, the larger goal. For example, the slaughterhouse case, uh, where the slaughterhouse uh, was in Delhi was uh, old, children were, uh, were slaughtering, there were people inside, there were, and it's nothing to do with religion or anything to do that. There as many uh, from all the religions there were people out there but 
it was not uh, they were not being able to remove that thing from Eidga. Eidga used to be in, in Sada Bazar area if you know what Delhi is. Yeah. Uh, so uh, among the amount of trucks that used to come in and the amount of uh, so it in a couple of hours where the capacity was to uh, to uh, slaughtered uh, 2500 20000 animals were being slaughtered so you have to look at the at the larger goal uh, so now it's been shifted from that to ghazi border so again uh, the way it's been slaughtered out uh, here they're using bolts they're using uh, this thing so it's it's uh, we we'll have to look at the larger goal yeah, we have to look at the larger goal. Uh, that was uh, uh, really uh, wonderful talking to you, uh, Himansu, sir. Uh, it had to, uh, you know, you have a, a long history of, you know, making really uh, change uh, the, the films which are capable of changing the society. And it has been proved by the legislation and the law passed uh, uh, after your films and, uh, uh, and 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 we hope that uh, we will be able to see these kind of films from you in coming years uh, so thank you again uh, for accepting our invitation and becoming part of our questions you no know, it, it 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 was a really a pleasure uh, it's always a pleasure to be with the cms and uh, uh, it's I've seen it grow I've seen it uh, from day one so yeah. uh, I, it's such a pleasure to be with you people thank you very much sir you're welcome uh, friends uh, this was Himansu Malhotra sir uh, one of the uh, you know the few filmmakers whose film really had created a ripple effect has changed the society uh, so uh, and, and and it was really wonderful talking to him we had a long history uh, as himansu sir was saying that he has seen uh, cms vatavaran growing uh, he uh, sir himansu ji is associated with cms vatavaran from from 2002 from day of its comings uh, when we started this uh, cms vatavaran international film festival and forum and uh, he was also uh, 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 you know awarded with uh, CMS Prithvi Ratna Award for his outstanding work in the environmental filmmaking sector. Uh, so that was it, uh, friends. Uh, thank you very much for becoming part of uh, the session. I, uh, before closing the session, I really want to, you know, express my thanks to our festival and program, our program partner, Canadian High Commission in India and the European Union in India. I will also like to, you know, uh, uh, thanks to all my team members who are behind the scene, uh, but they, they had worked tirelessly for last uh, more than a month to make this 18 day series a successful. Uh, uh, I like to express my uh, gratitude towards our director generals, Ms. P. and Vasanti, for having trust on us and giving us a free hand to do uh, the program. I would like to express, uh, you know, I would like to thank all my team members, uh, Suraj, uh, and Kavita, and Preeti, and Rajkumar, and 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 uh, Dipenderji and Gaurav Bhatia for all the work, and last not the least, uh, Gia for making wonderful designs. The posters you had seen, uh, they had worked tirelessly to make this. Uh, uh, series of uh, programs successful. Uh, uh, friends, today was the last day of uh, the series of programs which we are doing that is celebrating biodiversity, uh, and which started on 22nd of May. And, uh, and we had screened so many wonderful, beautiful films. Uh, and, and we talked to so many filmmakers. Uh, we talked uh, and we had done uh, training workshops and we had done panel discussions, uh, special sessions. So please do write to us if you want something. Uh, please do write to us. If you have any suggestion, if you have any ideas, 
which you want to share with us, we will be waiting for your uh, uh, replies, your emails, uh, uh, and, and we will try to uh, incorporate your suggestion in our future endeavors. Uh, thank you very much for being a part of the program. Uh, have a great day. Good night, friends.